overall it's pretty good. I can't complain. This is the uh, uh, Can-Am Axial, no, Axial 118 Yeti Can-Am Edition. I gotta let the dogs in, hang on. So anyway, like I was saying, Can-Am Axial 118th Yeti, maybe not exactly in that order. Um, pretty cool little rig. Picked up uh, this when they first came out two years ago. They came out as the Yeti, uh, and then the Axial Yeti Score, which is a little trophy truck. This is their new iteration to the lineup with a joint project of only consume Can-Am because it says Can-Am everywhere. And actually. I don't see actually anywhere except for the logo right there. 3D. 3D logo. Pretty cool rod. Red roll cage. Um, Can Am did one in uh, red and gold and black, so that's what they went with this one. Uh, pretty cool rig, ready to run. Uh, this one out of the gate could actually steer and uh, suspension function. The other one, the ball. Um, or uh, whatever the ball links were so tight that they wouldn't steer um, you'd actually have to physically turn it counter to your back on the radio to get it to come back um, cool ride slow but cool cool for banging around the house uh, we knew axial was coming out with a bunch of upgrades they had announced it a while back and we just uh, happened to order them all get them to come in at the same time we're gonna tear this thing apart and Fully upgrade it step by step, and uh, we'll do it. We'll break out the videos, make it simple. And uh, Russell system, upgrade the radio system. Only thing we're not going to change is the steering servo for now. The steering servo slot is adjustable. I'm pretty sure you could fit a full size servo in there if we wanted to. It's a pretty big slot. Pretty sure full size will fit right in there. So, yeah, so stay tuned. We'll uh, tear this thing apart. Uh, for this build we are going to be using the paddle tires and uh, it's a set of four yeah, they're um, rib for the front paddle for the rear um, we're going to be using the uh, things here we have. These are C hubs for the front. Rear locker for the rear axle to get rid of that uh, open differential. Internal rear dry shafts to get rid of the plastic ones that are going to break after we put the brushless to it. Front upgraded dry shafts for the UD. UD ah. Yeti Junior. In fact, we did not have to upgrade these ones because uh, the ones that come on the rig are steel. But these ones are really cool. They say axial on them. Big. Yeah, they see axial on them, and the sides spreading across them look pretty cool. Key piece here. This will be your aluminum rear or steel rear dry shaft. Dry shaft in the unit is uh, plastic. And front steering knuckles. And the upgraded billet steering rack instead of the plastic flexible one. Spectrum SR 215 high speed receiver. And um, we're going to put the fuse brushless system into it. This is a vehicle, novelty vehicle. We're not racing it, we're not crawling it, nothing competition. We're gonna go out, we drive around once a year with it. I might throw it in the glove box of my full size side by side, take it out once in a while in the summertime, but this will suit the needs. And then this was like 70 bucks here versus the next counterpart, which would have been Castle, which I normally go with. But Castle is a lot more 
needs setup, and this already comes with an EC3 connector. Nice. Plug and play, rock and roll. I know it's not that big of a difference, but uh, you lose a lot of tooting capability, and that motor is a 4500 kV motor. Uh, these things are waterproof. I've never had a problem with them. They're not censored. They're they're uh, sensorless, but they are fully waterproof. It does run 3s. We are going to run this thing on 3s. So let's uh, tear it all down. Let's do it, Keith. That's the call of the mating call of the Max's bighorn tire. <laughs> so here's down the mountain. Or, or like a, at a bar. There we go, get the front module off. This has got your uh, brain, this is your flux capacitor, the little green one, this is actually the capacitor, these wires are for uh, liquid flux. Right, I think, I don't yeah. know. Right, for sure. I'm not even sure anymore. Definitely. Uh, this ESC is no good. This one runs on diesel, we're switching to gasoline actually. You can tell it's diesel because of the magnet. So once we get rid of that, it'll be gas, yeah, simple enough. Yeah. Oh, and there's another wire for gas. <laughs> That's another way you can tell. There's a small O-ring in the back of your drive cup on the output of your transmission. You're not going to be able to see it, but you're going to have to take a word on it that it's in there. A little tiny orange one. Right down in the booty hole. Right in the booty hole. <laughs> you can make sure that stays in there. And you can see the dry shafts are non-collapsible. So either half will have that, and that's what they'll bounce off of. The squish gear themselves a little bit of travel. The squish. Okay, so Motorzo just has got that over there. He's popping in the Dynamite Fury of brushless 7 million hertz pers and 4,000 Turks. Um, scale, scale Turks and hertz pers. guys have a little e-clip e-clip you can use a flathead standard straight screwdriver blade whatever you want to call it and you just set it 
into one of the little windows on it and give it a roll and plop comes right off. Plop. You're gonna grab your part there, AX1361272547400, and you're gonna have to uh, pull the parts out of the bag. Before you get too far along, so you can identify the pieces of parts you need for that and not be guessing down the road. Is it that or is it not? I don't. Really no. With these knuckles, you're gonna have to reuse your stock bearings. You're gonna have to disassemble. Oops, sorry. You're gonna have to disassemble the uh, stock hub entirely and use the stock components, hardware included. The only thing the new ones come with are new bushings, and the bushings actually don't come with the knuckles, they come with the C-hubs where they fit into. A little bit of grease on those, pop those in, ready to go. Same goes for the dry shafts. The dry shafts, you're gonna have to build these with the ex uh, existing pin and bushing. It's nice to actually have uh, metal ball bearings with sealed um, sealed balls in them. So to get the parts you need out of this guy. I'm just gonna push out that pin, stock front. Push out that pin, take the ball out, change this part, put it all back together, slide this back into the new assembly with the bearings in it. Bam.
So I've uh, uh, yarded out the old servo mount here on the bottom of the chassis and we're going to take our SR215 servo and we're going to mount it right back here underneath and then this guy's going to sit kind of in over top of him like so and then I cleared flat the top of this all the mounts that held the stock one in so we could put our uh, uh, electronic speed control on top. Right now there's a small slotted section for the back mount so I'm going to take my uh, Dremel with a flat cut blade I'm not going to drop the whole thing flat because I need half of it, but the back half, and I'm going to nip that off a little bit. Doop. Look at that. 118 scale AR18 axle. Not to be confused with an axle. No idea how to take it apart, so what we're going to do is just start taking screws out until uh, it falls apart. Woo! Pretty sure it just opens up in half. Crawling. Crawling? 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 Yeah. These outer screws here. As you can see. I believe this has more hardware than their full size axle. Yeah. Almost. I think it does actually. Because the ends are molded, right? Ah, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, you have four screws around the pumpkin, two screws on either end, total of 17 screws. You don't want to grab and just rip it up that way, you'll snap off a little light and tab. So, here's your uh, pinion gear ring. This is the uh, little differential that's in there right now. The two gears, a couple of gears in between. That's a gear. We'll be installing the Yeti Junior Lunar Rear Locker. Racing rear axle shafts for the Yeti Junior. <clears throat> Ooh, it's super light. Hollow. Super light. 6061 grade aluminum. For the these can handle um, 8,000 torques. 8,000 torques. Small taper on this, small taper on that. It goes to the back edge.
is complete with the new locker and the new axle stubs. Get them all fancy. You good, man? I think we have one part to put in, we're done. Put it back together and let's go do some test hits. Let's go do some testing. Okay, so recap on build. We have 6,000 Turk horsepower Bershush motor. This is the water-cooled, liquid-cooled water jet 6,000. Uh, what was that giant mini ESC called? That's a giant mini ESC. It's bigger than my 10 scale one. Uh, the wire got tangled up here, so we ran it from here over to this thing and plugged it in. We're good there. An SR215 receiver tucked down underneath of the other piles of random Stuff. junk. I'm gonna run the cord in the back so it gets tangled into the dry shaft as we drive. Yeah. That's another pro tip. Pro tip? Anybody ever tells you these pro tips you heard are wrong? Get rid of that person in your life. You don't need that negativity. Yeah, guys just a wrap up on the build uh, so we've done all the axial option parts that we'll list in the description that they made available for these axi yeti juniors we did pick up the front and rear uh, paddle and rib tires uh, it is four wheel drive so the front um, uh, rib tires more just just for a look kind of thing on it so uh, it's not gonna help attraction at all actually it's gonna make it worse but it still be cool um, we went with the uh, 
Dynamite Mini Taser brushless system on it. We hooked it up to the rugged DX5 radio. up to knuckles uh, a lot of guys are complaining when these trucks first came out they were pretty crappy uh, these ones came, came a long way the shock feel good the uh, steering all the links everything on it is nice comes back to center no problem um, nice quick servo it's just a spectrum analog in it different uh, electronic package came into the Can-Am Yeti versus the Yeti Junior or the Yeti score that first came out um, these ones uh, they actually did they're way more fun the other one I have the other ones they took a bunch of upgrades uh, to get them working but uh, yeah this is kind of where they're at we're gonna do a little bit more detail work on it down the road we just wanted to get it beefed up uh, there was a locker as you see in the video in the rear end so it's no longer open the rear diff so that opens up uh, the drifting and stuff with this guy make it a lot more fun to drive so um, that's only 2s lipo it's capable of 3s lipo I tested it on 3s it's a little hairy uh, this motor system is a little bit to 4,500 kV, I think it is. It's a little bit chunky because of it's um, not centered. It's a sensor, sensorless, brushless, which it has trouble finding itself out of the hole, so it kind of chatters and chunks. It's a little bit hard on the drive line, so we actually might be pulling that out and swapping it out for something sensor just because it's such a small unit. You don't want to uh, damage anything with the power chunking in and out, uh, chattering, whatever they want to call it, you know, pick a name for it. So. Okay, cool little rig. Uh, let's go outside, get some uh, some run video, and uh, yeah, put the paddles on it. I got these for in the house, of course. The paddles will just get shredded in the house, and rude. Um, yeah, we'll uh, get her out, get some goods, check her out. <laughs> 